Welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. It is Happy New Year in the life of the church, so Happy New Year. It is the time in the church when we look back at what has happened this year as well as looking forward to the new year. Think about this past year. Recording and moving to live streaming our worship services. You can view worship anytime you like. How about that for convenience? Don't feel well? Stay home. Got stuff to do on Sunday? Great. But view church later on. No heat in the church? Live stream. It's the answer. What a long way we have come. And we have so much to look forward to in the coming year. Advent, Christmas Eve, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Transfiguration Sunday, Easter, All Saints Sunday. It goes on and on with all the many opportunities that we will have to worship and be with one another. Advent. It is the period of four weeks preparing and waiting for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas and also the preparation and waiting for the second coming of Christ. Like we say in communion, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. So we're in a period of waiting. Waiting sounds so passive, just sitting around, waiting for something to happen. I was talking to a friend of mine this week, and I mentioned about waiting and Advent, and I didn't seem very enthused. And then he said, anticipation. Advent is about anticipation a much stronger and active word. It's funny. Anticipation. It made me think of a Heinz ketchup commercial years ago in 1979. There are two kids, and one has not had Heinz ketchup before, and he's waiting for the ketchup to come out of the bottle and on to his hamburger, and the other kid responds, your mom doesn't get Heinz ketchup? And then there is pictured a Heinz ketchup bottle, and the ketchup slowly comes out of the bottle, and then the song, Anticipation, starts. Anticipation, it's mating, making me wait. The taste that's worth the wait. The viewer cannot wait for the ketchup to come out of the bottle. You can't wait to go to the store and pick up a bottle of this ketchup. And that's what Advent is all about. Anticipation. Active waiting for the birth of Jesus and his coming again. Our gospel lesson today gives the parable of the fig tree. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves, and now that summer is already near. So I thought, you know, today we could kind of change it around a little bit and not look at summer, but look at fall. Where we live, we have lots of trees, and right now we are seeing the season of leaves falling. We've seen the leaves go from green leaves to leaves changing color and now the leaves falling. Watching this happen is not only a time of waiting, but of anticipation. Though not many of us look forward to picking up the leaves. Let me share with you a story 
happened yesterday. So uh, for those of us that live in the city of Falls Church, there's anticipation about when the leaf trucks are going to come into your neighborhood and suck up all those leaves that we have raked or blown into the curb. And so the day before, we had a lot of wind, and all the leaves that I had blown onto the curb, a lot had blown back onto the yard. And it was about 7.30 a.m. I was up and I heard this vroom, and I looked out my front window and there was the guys there ready with their truck and their thing to suck up all the leaves. And I ran out to them and I said, can you do my yard last so I can blow all these leaves back onto the street? And they said, sure. So, Pastor Dave, I got the leaf blower out to the chagrin of my neighbors at 7.30 in the morning. And I rushed, 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 and I blew all those leaves onto the curb. I was anticipating when they would come and just suck up all of those leaves, all that hard work. We're called to anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. We have a huge beautiful maple tree near the Circle Drive. And every year I wait with anticipation to see what colors God is going to give that tree. Sometimes bright orange, sometimes red, scarlet, yellow, all types of colors. We have the trees on the front yard and I have neighbors that they walk the campus here, the grounds of the church, and they say to me, oh, Pastor Dave, we just love the trees that you have here. They're so colorful. And then I remark, well, will you come and help us rake them up? And they don't have much to say. They just walk right on. They have their own leaves to deal with. Both the prophet Jeremiah and Luke tell us to pay attention. Pay attention around us of all that is happening. The days are surely coming. Be on guard. Be alert. Pay attention. Advent is a multi-layered time. There is the desire to capture the birth of the baby Jesus again. We want the angels to sing. We want to see the shepherds. All that goes on proclaiming peace on earth. But we also must pay attention that there is something Coming on the horizon, when we pay attention, we are alert that Christ will come again. The day when there will be peace and justice for all. The day that there will be no war. There will be equity for everyone. That is what we hope for with anticipation. So I want to give us five ways five things that we can do to pay attention during these Advent days. So listen to these. Number one, pay attention to those closest to us. How will we give and receive love in these relationships? Pay attention to those closest to us, our spouse, our kids, our neighbors, our co-workers, those that are close to us all the time, how we can express our love and gratitude and thanks for what they do for us. To pay attention. Number two, pay attention to the people we encounter. How might our interaction bring holy moments? Pay attention to the people we encounter. That could be someone we see on the street. It could be someone we've never seen before. It could be someone at the grocery store. It could be someone who helps us or someone that we help. But to pay attention to people around us and how we can help. And for many of us, that will be a story that will stay with us in our hearts and in our souls. <laughs> the third is this one. Pay attention to the people least like us. Pay attention to the people least like us and how can we learn from them? 
our culture is increasingly diverse with different people, different cultures. We can learn from them. We can learn from people who've le- who have less than we have. We can learn from people who have more than we have. But to pay attention to them. Number four, pay attention to God and what God is doing in the world. I can remember when we had a vacation Bible school and they were called God Moments. And we asked all the kids when they went out from church that day to think about a time when they had a God moment and to tell us about it the next day. So many times we just take God for granted. But God is with us in our lives each and every moment. And to think about those times that we feel God's presence in our lives where we see where God has made a difference in the world. And to give thanks to God. God loves us. God never turns away from us. God is always there. And let us do the same. And then the last is this. Pay attention to ourselves. Friends, it's called self-awareness. To have a clear perception of our personalities, our strengths, our weaknesses, our thoughts, our beliefs, our motivations, and our emotions. And how will that self-awareness translate into how we spend our time? Take a look inside of our lives. Take a look inside of our hearts and our minds and our souls. Who are we? Who has God made us to be? And in our self-awareness, how are we expressing our love of God? And how are we expressing our love of neighbor through our words, our deeds, our actions? And Pastor Dave always reminds us, and our wallets and pocketbooks. Self-awareness, it's so important in our lives. So during this time of Advent, I pray for myself and for you that in the darkness and in the cold, Pastor Dave is having a hard time with it getting dark at 4.30, 5 o'clock and so cold. But let us find hope and anticipation in the birth of Jesus Christ And the Christ to come. Like that song, Anticipation. It's making me wait. But friends, it is worth the wait. It is worth the wait. And that is the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we all say together, Amen. So we're going to sing a hymn. It's 